all shraddhas are important what is the purpose of a shradh is uh, to increase the faith of the spirit and yeah, the leg is towards yama always that yama can hold your leg and pull you people are scared of other spirits the light reduces no sunlight reduces and sunlight reduces there's a chance for uh, the spirits to come because that story is over it's a new beginning that's why they even shave the head it's a new beginning for them they're done with this i told you all the rituals are to what build faith in the spirit we're telling the spirit the story of what exactly happened so everyone thinks that the rituals we do are for themselves but they're for the spirit this is all lost knowledge okay nobody knows this stuff anymore guruji what is the significance of pitru paksha Pitru Paksha is uh, again one of these uh, celestial events where the worlds can communicate with each other. Shakti Swanya, so she allows you to communicate with your ancestors. Maybe about seven generations before you, their DNA is invested in you, so they own a part of this real estate of your body. So you can't take decisions by yourself. You have to consult them. those who own part of the real estate who gave you the body so pitru paksha is for that communication you can talk with them take their permission for all the things you want to do ask their blessings and then they're like yeah this is a good life direction for us and they agree and then you do this body is owned by a council mm-hmm. that council are your pitrus this okay. body is not yours yeah. ha ah. so the shraddh that is performed during pitru paksha hmm. uh, is it like of more importance than the shraddh performed on the death tithi of a person all shraddhs are important what is the purpose of a shraddh is uh, to increase the faith of the the spirit in the the future that's going that they can unleash on that they are the creators of their own future okay it's to bring it's to build shraddha in the spirit that's why it's called shraddh so the spirit has to build faith and so we have to reassure the spirit again and again and listen it's like you don't have to hang around here because you know you're fully capable of creating your future you create what you want that's a message that's what all the rituals do or at least are supposed to do but they nobody knows what they do here but yeah i have some questions about the funeral mm. so a lot of rituals done during the funeral and post uh, the funeral also mm. but everybody just listens to the priest mm. and uh, nobody tells the significance of why we are doing what we are doing that's okay because you know it gives them a peace of mind that it's taken care of and so there's nothing wrong in that no but the survivor should understand no why we are doing those who want to understand can watch this video so what do you want to understand so when a person dies their head is kept towards the south hmm. why is it so because the waves of yama come from south he he is the dikpalaka of the southern side and the northern side is uh, kubera so we are hoping that they will get a prosperous next life we put the head towards kubera and the leg towards leg towards oh. yama yeah, it's not the other way around yeah the leg is towards yama always that yama can hold your leg and pull you yeah i told you the soul goes and lies back in the body right yama comes holds the leg and pulls it out and why is cremation not supposed to be done after sunset uh, because people are scared of other spirits the the light reduces no sunlight reduces and sunlight reduces there's a chance for uh, the spirits to come so they don't be there during the daytime so that's why they do, they don't want to do this stuff there because you know the mantras that are chanted during the death they allow they give encouragement to the spirit okay So now we want to give encouragement only to this spirit, not other spirits. So we do it after sunset. Unless you're some kind of expert, you should you should not do. It's the confidence also of the priests. They they like I'm not confident that no other spirits will come here encouraged by these mantras. Yeah, but I'm not sure they know this themselves. Why are the hands and the legs of a dead person tied up, and why are all the knots in the body removed before the cremation process starts? So, once once the body dies, there is a final vayu which leaves, and uh, that is called dhananjaya. It's like a sound. If you are alive, you can. I mean, if you are um, clear audience. and you can hear these sounds like me you can hear it it sounds like a shank 
at the end dhananjay is when the last bits of the vayus are leaving that means his body is going to die how many vayus are there 10 vayus are there so when the last vayu called uh, dhananjay leaves we don't want that to come back because then you know there are there are complications sometimes people die and come back because somehow dhananjay vayu got stuck back inside because the spirit realized it can make an opposite sound that that kind of drags the vayu back so you are supposed to listen and when you hear the last of dhananjay vayu then you have to tie it when you tie the two toes together they electrically they do not allow dhananjay to enter because dhananjay leaves from the toes but what if people just tie the toes if no one heard anything monkey see monkey do means what you get monkey results no so sometimes the spirit uh, the dhananjay vayus come back in and then the body uh, body pretends like like when my mom died i heard the shank they were showing me the whatsapp video and i heard the shank and i said she is gone just leave her the last uh, i heard the shank start started means she's going like just relax but no they didn't wait they took her to hospital started pumping her with oxygen and all these artificial things which made the why you come back anandji why you come back yeah, i was not there they were showing me on whatsapp and i'm like can't tell idiots my uncle acted like a complete idiot on that day he's like no oh, my only sister i have to do this ah who ah and i'm like abhi shank is sounding like what shank yeah okay so then she came back into her body and then she wasn't herself because some other spirit came back ah huh. and that caring for the mom as if she then they like you please come ha huh? you please come the day i said i'll come she died because that wasn't her there was some other spirit sitting inside and i made i made that spirit chant om namah shivaya i said you chant om namah shivaya so it kept chanting and that it like how did you identify that it is not are i can see but if i tell you that i can see you don't put in the years of practice that i have put in to be able to see you say it as can take it then i want to hit you with this stick ha ah. and why are all these knots open before the cremation process starts they don't uh, cremate with then it's finalized that they're going to die so there's no need to to block the vayus let them i mean you tie something together you you're not allowing uh, the fire to move inside oh see the body is an offering to agni deva right so if i give you a gift i'm going to remove all the tags and give you something like that thank <laughs> you like it's considered respectful to to put the body like that that's why they wash the body because it has to be offered to agni deva at the end okay and why should the karta not look behind when they hold the because that body. story is over it's a new beginning that's why they even shave the head it's a new beginning for them they're done with oh. this that story is over ah uh, we take it very seriously to move on in hinduism we don't mourn we move on and what is the significance of the ritual where uh, There's a pot on the shoulder, and we have to take anti-clockwise pradakshina by the pyre, and it is hold thrice and then drop behind. Yeah, I mean that's um, a representation of the life force going out. So basically, it's coming. I told you all the rituals are to what build faith in the spirit. We're telling the spirit the story of what exactly happened. You had holes in your pot, and water leaked out of it, and then you know. it's time for it to go so spirit is understanding because they can't understand language at this point they're coming and going yeah you can't really talk at that point so the pot is a symbol of their own life yeah when they come there they see that oh this is it ah oh, that yeah my life ran out like a pot okay now but that's not the end there's more it's basically it and everyone thinks everyone thinks that the rituals we do are for themselves but they're for the spirit i want to do as that too yeah <laughs> they for their own protection and for to you know cover my own ass that's not why we do rituals for dead people everything has a meaning and why is that 
stone which was used to hold the earthen pot preserved and used in the next uh, rituals that's the immortal immortality yeah. your jiva is immortal it can now move into a next place you know so you are indestructible there's an indestructible part of you look so the spirit is like oh what's the indestructible part of me they get it and why do priests generally avoid uh, allowing women to do the last rites and to perform shraddha? casual sexism da there's been this lot of lot of casual sexism in hinduism it somehow crept in it was not there during the rishis times and somehow it crept in and it, it's not something we should continue with i'm against all this nonsense we don't initiate women in uh, oh, what is it gayatri mantra don't do upanayana for women women can't uh, enter temple during their periods what are you afraid will happen exactly what no ashuddhi ashuddhi what what do you think will happen is a natural process what is ashuddha about this the too many shuddhi rituals for no reason we are here in nature what should the who's doing shuddhi for this isn't it should you getting any bad smells no everything is great so this, this is bullshit you can't call nature ashuddh nature knows how to clean everything eh? you can come in your body naturally how it is ashuddhi is in the head and why is the period of 12 to 13 days marked as a mourning period in which the family performs some rituals uh, in the memory of the departed one mm-hmm. why only 12 to 13 days these uh, no it is uh, 12 days of mourning okay yeah so these whenever you see the number 12 it always refers to the journey of the sun mm-hmm. across the 12 rashis so during this time you have to get into the mood of each rashi and uh, that's what the rituals are the morning is like you see the spirit to each rashi you tell them that you are now in this rashi now in this rashi now in this rashi that's how you exit the world okay but uh, this is all lost knowledge okay nobody knows this stuff anymore they don't even know how to mourn what is the right way <coughs> So it's okay. I mean, I'm taking care of it, along with so many other gurus. We are the eagles of the valley of death. We take care of it. Everyone has come there without the the proper rituals. Why there? You know, does everyone get proper rituals? Hardly anyone today. Even if they do the rituals, it's not proper. Then finally, I have to help them. there is a, a shortcut also now because many times uh, children are leaving abroad they come just for the final rites and they have to go back to us or whatever mm. so they the priest also suggest a shortcut method of covering the whole uh, ritual span right. into a shorter period right does that work everyone wants to have a baby in 3 months i don't know why wait the proper 9 months otherwise it'll be an immature premature baby you know If you don't have patience to wait for nine months, don't have babies. That's metaphorically what I'm telling you. I got it. What is the significance of a sutak period? What? Uh, why is it defined? Uh, here it comes. Way? More shuddhi comes. <laughs> Not only the people unrelated also are now doing shuddhi because they think that death is a dirty, unnatural thing. Hmm. Okay, so we need to separate separate the garbage from the real true stuff that's there. If we want to make sense, there's no need for any sutak period because nature doesn't have a shuddhi concept at all in nature. It's a cycle. It recycles. Yes, you can look at it as a food cycle or as a shit cycle. However, you want to look at it, that's a cycle. Food shit, 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 food shit is nature. What is a shuddh in this? And why is a married woman considered fortunate if she dies before her husband dies? More casual sexism, because uh, in one of the, uh, I think, uh, Manasmriti only, 
woman is a property of her father until she gets married then she is a property of her husband until he dies then she is a property of her son is fortunate not to escape from this if she dies is fortunate if she dies only mm. <laughs> here they're saying that it's okay for a man to be able to live alone and enjoy himself now but not for a woman to enjoy herself after husband dies finally she'll be like ah, now i can do what i want to do but no she can't it's very unfortunate that she really discovers she has more bosses not just her husband when she starts to discover that then of course it's unfortunate so there's some are saying the truth about the casual sexism and i have some questions about post funeral rituals mm. so does performing these rituals help the soul to transit faster than it normally would depends on the ritual no what do you think a can a car take me to bangalore in 2 uh, hours depends on the car so which rituals are you particularly talking about nobody knows any rituals anymore yeah, whatever is performed whatever is suggested by the priest because nobody questions it's a continued science and science only lives if you ask questions if you don't ask questions you are not practicing ancient science you are practicing ancient dogma there's a difference between ancient science and ancient dogma right huh. but if you question at that point of time it no no that's too late why didn't you question this when since you were young didn't you see death when you were a child i saw i questioned hmm. and that's why i am a scientist and after cremation why are the ashes tied to the door and not brought inside the house that makes sense right because you don't want to again put it in and then get emotion attached to it again and then confuse the spirit some more and just tie it out and you're it's a message to the spirit tera idhar kaam ho gaya is it for the spirit or for, for the, the spirit? spirit everybody <laughs> thinks that the rituals are for them every ritual you do have to summon is for the spirit because you care about it not for you to feel better so if the asthis are tied at the door does the soul feel that this it's a message right like what I, i will take all your stuff and tie it at the door how do you feel you like oh, yeah, i this is not my place anymore yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay like wait that used to be my bones and they're still coming after the ash and they're like see there there we are going to move on if you come in and then you see how easily we moved on you'll be upset so don't come and why is only milk and water offered via a thread to the soul for 10 days and why only 10 days a thread is very important because it uh, it it allows those uh, things to become small small molecules and the milk and the water it becomes more of its subtle form which is a way that a spirit can accept it So they, really they can only accept smells, and they can accept molecules like anything that can become an aerosol. They can accept. So that's why to make the milk uh, kind of evaporate, we we put it through a string. That's how you offer to spirits. If you want to offer a liquid to spirit, put it on a on a string. It's easier for it to smell it. They really consume it. Yeah, it shows your respect. when you offer things why only for 10 days aske baad jagah khali karo na time to go you know it's done it's for the spirit to understand you know i do care about you and, you know but you're dead so now there is no point of you hanging around you're not useful here so you go and also during that those offerings people whatever they wanted to say to the spirit they'll say in their mind and the spirit can read that it will see your aura changing colors and it will understand what you're thinking so then your your communication is complete if you like oh itna paisa mil gaya babu ji mar gaye the ghost is going to see it so is the soul present in the same house for those 10 12 days and they watch over us where so then it stays outside outside stays outside and uh, maybe because you tied the ash there and whatever so <clears throat> that's why they burn the body immediately so that they have this ash to put as a symbol and why is the karta of the last rites not allowed to visit anyone's house for 12 days 
because the spirit will try to contact him whom the other people the karta but inside the house it's protected it can't enter because the mantras have made it so it can't come inside you mm-hmm. sit there for 10 days and finally you know yama will be like come bus in what ways can they try to communicate then see you know they they have a feeling of ownership over the body usually it's your father or mother a feeling of ownership on what they want to contact you they want to hug you they want to tell you they want to do something they're not leaving their attachment and going which is what we don't want we don't want a spirit of our mother to be sitting on our head forever we want her to go and live her life too right enough of this vicarious pleasure in your children right so that's what we need we do it's not an old thing vicarious pleasure in my children i'm going to stand here and watch till my grandson and then you know spirit and you're coming and you're going and you're coming and you're going amasya and unuma is you're coming in clumsily knocking something over and then going and then the people think the house is haunted because you haven't left sitting in the valley of death the eagles come and tell you i have had enough they're like ha ah, actually and then then they go and why should the karta fast for those 12 days and have only one meal a very simple meal because you're not going out no point eating crazy stuff and then having to go to the doctor that's why no alcohol no smoking so don't eat one meal be healthy wait until 10 days and then you can go out makes sense <laughs> so during the death rituals like after the funeral mm. so whatever rituals are performed in that when pinda mm. uh, and after performing rituals related to the pinda are not allowed to touch anything or anybody else till they have a bath mm. why is that so so that's so because water has a way to change your electricity again those who touch the pinda which is an offering to the ancestor will have a different vibration in them because due to the mantras chanted that pinda has a different vibration which is uh, going to lower your vibration if you if you start to vibrate like a dead person then you will become a dead person so go and immediately have a bath and don't spread it to your kids and everything go have a bath and the water washing over you changes the potential then you can do whatever you want will change i mean you have to feel these things right okay you don't understand something you do it and feel it and then you'll know why it is and after the 12 day uh, rituals in the memory of the dead mm. 13 day onwards when the god's worship is started mm. before doing that uh, why is the entire house clean with gomutra and black mustard seeds are added to all corners mm, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. house black, black mustard seeds also remove uh, those kind of energies so if you have spirit problem in your house any spirit problem put black mustard seed or even gomutra itself has the property to make it uninhabitable uninhabitable for the spirits it's a, a great purification ritual this mustard seeds and when we are uh, doing rituals for the dead person why don't we light a lamp near uh, where we have the puja room or before god's photo idol that will hurt them our ancestors yeah because they're coming and going and something and then the suddenly this light coming over there if you light a lamp for god god's light comes to the lamp then they'll find it hard to stick around oh then they'll be somewhere with half knowledge and it, it hurts them they should not do it it hurts their senses so uh, in the 12th day final ritual uh, objects like towel umbrella clothes Mm. and not many things are offered mm. uh, and it is said that this is for their f- easy future journey mm-hmm. so what is the significance of offering these it's offerings? not significance it's that only you so you take all these the, things it's good for you for your the soul can relate to these physical objects no but they understand the emotion by which you offered okay uh, doesn't matter what you offer but then you like I'm, i i care about what's happening with you and you know Right. You go to the train. You're going for a last journey. You're never coming back to Bangalore. And don't you expect that some of your friends will come there and, you know, a farewell. Uh, yeah, off, go for your good farewell and give you good wishes. Since you can't talk in language, you're talking in this words with visual things so that they get it. Ah, they care. Okay, they care. That's it. 
Nothing more complicated than that. And why is only crow as a bird chosen for offering pindas? It's a special bird that uh, it can allow the spirit to come into it, and indeed, it's the only bird that can do that. So the spirits actually come yeah. through the crow to yeah. eat it. Yeah. They do. If they didn't accept your offering, they won't come. They come, kick it, and go. So there are times when many crows come at once and they finish it off. Hmm. There are also times when crows are present, they are there on the trees, we can see them around, but hmm. nobody comes, even if they come down. Yeah, showing you that I'm not happy with you. Yeah. Start talking to the spirit and fix whatever they didn't fix, close all the things that need closure. How? Talk to the spirit. Go and study somewhere in school. Do PhD so that you can become even more stupid. No. But it's out there all about it. How to talk with it. What can I tell you? Your brain needs to be in a, a capacity to understand that you don't know everything. Then you can learn. Yeah, spirit. Let me sense. I already explained how to sense a spirit. It still smells. Start using your nose if you want to talk to a spirit. People are very bad at imagining smells. They don't know how to use these nerves. They live without smell, that's why they get cheated. Even a dog has more success in life than a human being. The reason is, it has smell. Why don't smell things? How to explain to someone with, without a sense of smell, how to talk to spirits? Spirits understand your feelings, not your words. And did you have, you can, you can put a translator, like translating Tamil to English, you can translate feelings to uh, words. Then you can communicate. It's not that difficult. It's a big deal. It's concentration. Every yogi has concentration. It's called dhyan. And without dhyan, you want to communicate. So how can I communicate with spirits without developing any, uh, without putting any effort into our uh, ears into dhyan? Teach me. That's why I keep this danda. So Guruji, there are certain places like Banaras, uh, Nasik, Bodh Gaya, mm. uh, which are preferred as locations for final rites and positive resurgence. Mm. Bodh Gaya by the Buddhists. But yeah, there are certain holy places where uh, the energies are good and none of the useless stuff happens. Like the spirit coming back into body, then hanging around for 10 days and then trying to trouble you and coming back every Amvasya and then troubling you and then all that will not happen if you you go to certain places like Varnasi, Manikarnika got it, Shiva's fire burning there and it is an eternal fire, never goes off, okay? Nobody can make it off, it's burning there. So I had been to Banaras some time back mm. and we were taking a boat ride in the Ganga river and the mm. boatman was telling us all the stories related to all the ghats mm. and from a very distant view we saw the Manikarnika ghat and mm. it was all black and there were so many pyres burning mm. and there was a waiting like for the bodies on the staircase only. Here no sunrise, sunset, nothing because those priests are experts. They know what they're doing. So they send you. If you want to send someone for sure, then take them to... People take a flight with a dead body and go Yeah, there. the boatman told that ah. uh, uh, Hindus from all over the globe come here to shed their bodies because yeah. then they'll get mukti. Yeah, people when they become very old and they know they're going to die, they travel to Varnasi and die there. There is a place like that in uh, Mukti Dham or something, which is like a hostel there in Banaras. Yes, yes, Mukti Dham. They're there you, to die there. Only you can stay there for two weeks. And then uh, you have to, to die, die if you them. don't die, you have to go back home. That's right. So why is Banaras made so much provision for the death? Why not? It's the holiest city of uh, the Hindus. Because Kashi Vishwanath lives there. And is guarded by Kal Bhairav. That entire place. Okay. Yeah. That place is about death. Banaras is about death. So if someone is cremated there, then they go to the... It's also about rebirth, this place. Where if you want to make a change in your life, you have to go to Varanasi. I met my guru there. Okay. In Varanasi. Yeah. 
like when i was going to the mountains he asked me to meet him there and i was there i was there with two two uh, parts of two dead people <laughs> ashes <laughs> and i was i was doing their last rituals because nobody did for them oh ah uh, and i finished that and i was like abhi kya there's nothing else for me to do because i was uh, uh unhappily married as is we don't have to say unhappily i was married and uh, was having a really bad time in my life not business also was going good but still i was not happy so i was sitting here saying what to do with all my money when i'm not happy mm-hmm. that's what i was thinking what to do next i don't know what to do, what to do next like okay i can get divorced and then what i had no idea so i said let me just sit here and then i saw mata baba ji coming there with like a new moon like sorry like a full moon he was walking and coming <laughs> and then my next life started no then i had to come back to banaras again then my next life started again it's a place of death if you go to banaras and stay there for some time you will die not physically i mean it's polluted enough to kill you also but uh, if you take care to avoid the pollution then you you will get a rebirth of your mind and that's important banaras is such like that such a secret place So certain places have that sacred uh, aura. If you just sit there for some time, you feel better. Like Chamundi Hill, where we are right now. What do you feel after coming here? Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm in my mother's lap. Guruji, would you like to tell us about rebirth? How it happens? Yeah. How we get to choose? Or yeah. who yeah, does? Yeah, rebirth only happens to some people. Rebirth only happens to some people. The, you need skill to have rebirth. To remember everything and to get into another world. You need skill for that, but people think rebirth is 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 default for everyone. They just dissolve. Like Shakti is like this guy was so boring. This Jiva was so boring, doesn't exist anymore. So only Jivas who can write stories, create stories, craft stories with their life, they're the ones who wa- want to be reborn, and they're the ones who can apply for it. So there is nothing like seven janam, seven births. You know, fantasies. Let no, us separate fantasies and like some some reality. Not reality, but at least the rules. No, nothing is real, like I told you. And how is it decided that a person gets born into what form in the next life? They decide. They don't think. Yes. While dying, they'll think this buffalo had a better life than me, and then the reborn as a buffalo. That's what happened to my teacher. One of my teachers called Ibrahim. He's also an immortal, and he he was staying with Baba Ji. So he taught me this. He told me that he was a prince, and then uh, I mean, no, he was not a prince. What was he? He he was a Marwadi in Varanasi when Kabir was there, and then uh, while dying, he felt that. Uh, you know, even though kabir had offered him to learn things like so many times he had told him to learn things this this rich marwadi guy had had gone to kabir and asked him for the truth and kabir said okay i'll teach you and then he said do not now my son's wedding and then he said okay then kabir said now are you ready to learn he's like not now my grandson is just born like that he spent his whole life not now my grandson is getting married not now my grandson grandson is born and finally he died and then one buffalo was braying outside and he said yes your life is better than mine he felt it from his heart that the buffalo's life is better than his he became a buffalo and guess what he got eaten and then they skinned him and then they made a drum out of him but he was so conscious that i am a buffalo and i'm going to be the best buffalo even in my death and when they put him on the drum he started making real good sound such amazing sound that it was presented to kashi naresh and kashi naresh was playing on it and he lost interest in his wife like they like he's not looked at us for 3 weeks now he's only playing that drum you know so one day when he went to the bathroom one wife came and slashed the drum so then ibrahim's soul got released from the drum and he's like now i want to be very conscious i think after living in a king's palace a king's life is good so i'm going to be a king and he became a king in uh, but uh, he became a king in Persia at that time 
to the Persian king Ibrahim, again finding his satisfaction because he consciously chose to be a king and he's like, it's not really what I thought it was. So, you know, he wants to return it, but it's not Amazon. So, <laughs> so he's like feeling depressed already. And then one day there was a lot of shuffling and searching and some sounds on the on top of his roof. He comes out and then he looks up there because he's calling a lot of spiritual people to his palace to teach him and nothing is happening. They're coming and they just like don't want to lose this patronage of the king. So they're saying things to please him. Nobody's saying the truth. A real guru will slap you in your face uh, when you, you come up with nonsense. But if you do right stuff, he'll guide you. Guru is neutral. Guru doesn't have any investment in you. Right? So these were not real gurus. He was not getting good teaching. He had heard of Kabir and he had a thought, I should go and meet Kabir in India. And he said, who will go so far in your right? So Kabir came there to make him make a decision. As a camel trader on top of his roof, Kabir just landed up there and he was walking around uh, on, on the roof, shuffling around. So Ibrahim comes out with a sword, he's like, Move this is the top of my roof. He's pissed off, right? He's a king. So, come here, I'll cut your head. That guy says, I was looking for my camel. And he's like, How can you find a camel on the roof? And he's like, How can you find spirituality sitting in this palace? Go meet Kabir. And then he vanished. And the guy is like, drop everything, we have to meet Kabir. <laughs> and then he took a palki and came here. And after learning with Kabir, he became immortal. And Kabir didn't teach him Ram Nam. Ram Nam is what makes you immortal. Okay. He didn't teach him Ram Nam. The name of Rama. If you know the name of Rama, you'll be immortal. The real name of Rama. What is it? <laughs> Let me tell you how much, how much uh, Ibrahim had to die to get this. <laughs> because when he came inside, he stopped at the gates of Varanasi and he said, uh, excuse me, um, go tell Kabir I'm here. I'm the king of Persia. One of the kings of Persia. There are many kings. So, Kabir sent a reply. He, he was a weaver, so he took a kurta, he took a, a pajama, gave it to that guy and he said, ask him to wear this, send everybody back, leave everything else and come here, then I'll teach him. So he said, yeah, this is what uh, Kabir Maharaj said. And he was like, nobody said this to me. And he came wearing the kurta pajama, but he had a sword. And he said, that also, go, send it. So he had to send a sword also, then he came inside. But every day in the morning, he would wake up and practice his sword early in the morning. Because he's a king, he has to practice sword. So, some sticks like this and he would he would practice. And Kabir was aware that he's doing this before. Well, he thinks that everyone is sleeping. And he still thinks he's a king. So, Kabir is like, I'm making him scrub my toilets, but he still thinks he's a king. He was trying to explain to his wife. She said, come on, yaar, it's been three years. You had to give him Ram Nam. Come on, you can't be like this. So Kabir is like, hey, you do one thing, you take all the waste. A lot of people used to come to eat at his house, so there was a lot of food waste. Tomorrow you take all the food waste and put it on his head when he comes out. Let's see how he responds, okay? If he responds in a lovely way, I'll give him Ram Nam tomorrow only. So she does that. She, uh, she puts the garbage on his head. She thought it's a fun side project. And, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> looks like this. There's no anger in his face, but he looks up. If this was Persia, you would never do that. And he walked off. Then Kabir said, who is he? King, still, still Persian king. Now, how to teach him? Can't teach. You do what you want, Kabir Maharaj. So, one day Kabir Maharaj says, he's finally ready. And his wife is like, come on. He's like, but he's behaved so rudely as that day. With he said, no, it's not about rude behavior. He's ready. Go and drop it on his head again. This time she comes, Pachax! Then he looks up and he starts laughing. <laughs> He's like, what, you want to match the garbage inside with garbage outside? And then he went up smiling, he had a bath and he went. Now who is he? Like, He's garbage. So that's the best person who agrees that he doesn't know shit. That's the person you can teach. So Ibrahim became that person. Doing what? Polishing Kabir's shoes, cleaning his toilet, taking his children to school and back. I don't know if there was school or what, but basically looking after the kids, helping his wife in the kitchen, maintaining his garden. This is what he did for Kabir. So Kabir's gardener became enlightened. 
and he was my guru also he taught me something so yeah he taught me the value of ramna because he had really struggled for it he could have got ramna when he was a marwadi from kabir he died became a king then came back when kabir was old and then again learned from him so. thank you guru ji it was a very nice session you busted many myths and you gave a lot of information and very interesting stories also i, I feel it's my duty to come and give this information because there's so much misinformation and the, it's like we're living in some sense deprived universe where we can't see the world around us and these are things that we understand when our senses are open right so i i think it's important to understand that you can wake up your senses practicing yoga so thank you for asking these questions if you have more questions ask more questions guru ji before we conclude this session would you like to share some thoughts on how a person facing death can not be fearful and embrace death gracefully are death is your door out of this misery why are what is ungraceful about it like how can you be ungraceful about it ah yes i finally the door is opening thank god so you get another chance it's a second chance you're getting die consciously say om namo shivaya and die yeah after that one of uh, the eagles will take care of you don't worry when you chant om namo shivaya remember that thank you guruji thank you so much you're welcome